Hey, Julia, how's it going? I heard from Helen and the other moms, but do you really have a paid membership card at that new members-only supermarket? Hey, Tessa, how's it going? Yeah, I got one. I applied for it just the other day. There wasn't anywhere for me to shop in the neighborhood for the longest time, so I always used online shopping. But when that new store opened up in the city recently, <laughs> I splashed out and signed up. That's so cool! Would you take me with you sometime? I heard that a single-paying member is allowed to bring up to two non-paying adults with them. Ugh, oh, I've been wanting to check it out ever since it opened, please? Sure, no problem. I was actually planning on doing some shopping there this weekend. If that works for you, let's go together. There's no limit on children, so feel free to bring the kids along too. Oh, that's fine. I've been wanting to go for a while, so I'd rather browse at a leisurely pace. I'll leave the kids with my husband's folks. Okay, great. Well, in that case, I'll leave my kids with the husband then. Are you cool with meeting there and parting ways when we're done? Ah, uh, well, if you wouldn't mind me asking another favor, could you please pick me up in your car? Me and my husband have only the one car. He'll be using it this weekend, so I won't be able to get there by myself. I'd really appreciate it if you could pick me up. Don't worry, I'll cover the petrol money. Sure, no problem. Well then, I'll come and pick you up this weekend. Shall we meet at the nearby convenience store? Perfect! Thanks a bunch, Julia! Not at all. I'm looking forward to it. Tessa? Where are you right now? I think I lost you. Where did you go? Oops, oh, sorry. I got distracted looking at all the fancy shelves in the middle. <laughs> wow, just wow. This place is so cool. Everything comes in large. It's amazing. I've never seen a supermarket like it. <laughs> You're on quite the shopping spree, huh? You took the biggest shopping cart and it's crammed so full. I think stuff's going to start falling out. <laughs> Oopsie, maybe I got a little carried away. <laughs> I'm so pleased I tagged along today. Well then, I'm going to go pay for my stuff soon. Are you ready to come up to the register yet? Let's meet up there. Oh, uh, pardon me for just a moment. I need to go to the little girl's room. <laughs> Be a darling and go through the register for me, Kay. I'll come and find you if you wait for me on the other side. Uh-huh. Um... What about the money? What should I do about the money for your stuff? Um, pay it? What? Ah, oh, I see. You mean I pay for your stuff first, then you pay me back afterwards or something? Uh, I'm sorry, but lending and borrowing money can be a major source of trouble, so I tend to avoid it. And I hate to say this, but to be honest with you, me and you aren't that familiar, and I wouldn't feel comfortable. What are you talking about? You're going to pay for all my shopping, right? What? All of it? Good heavens! Oh, please tell me you weren't actually expecting me to pay for anything today. <laughs> are you being serious? Uh-huh. No, wait. I'm the one who should be asking you that. Of course, I'll pay for my own stuff myself. But you are going to pay for yours, right? You wouldn't really ask me to pay for all your shopping, would you? The mountain of stuff in your cart looks like it could easily come to $450. You wouldn't ask me to pay that, right? You're joking, aren't you? <laughs> yes, of course, you're just joking. Stop it, Tessa, this isn't funny. I'm not joking. What the hell are you talking about? I was kind enough to come shopping with you today. The least you could do is pay for all of my stuff. <sighs> You're showing a disappointing lack of gratitude here, Missy. What? What you're saying makes zero sense. You're the one who asked me if you could come with me. Aren't I the one who let you tag along so you could take advantage of the benefits of my membership here? Why on earth would I be obliged to give you anything, let alone pay for your entire shop? Uh, because I'm going to give you $5 petrol money? Which technically means I'm the one who paid for you to come here. No, your logic is ridiculous. That makes no sense. 
the cost of your shopping is clearly going to be higher than a measly $5 of petrol money. Even if, for the sake of argument, I concede that you did pay for me to come here, that still wouldn't mean you have any right to demand that I pay for your shop, nor does it mean I have any obligation to do so. About 80% of the things in our cart are things you put there. I didn't even bring that much money with me today. What you're asking is impossible. I will not be paying. You might not have cash money, but you do have cards, don't you? Just get it on your credit card. You have two of them in your purse. Wait, what? How the heck did you know that? No way. Did you look inside my purse? Of course I did. It's only natural to check the required funds are available before embarking on a major shopping spree. You looked inside my purse to check how much money I had? Does anyone actually do that? Ugh, this is just pure creepy. I'm actually disgusted. Ugh, Ugh this can't be happening. Enough of your babbling. Hurry up and pay for my things. If you insist on taking forever, I'll be waiting by the exit adjusting my makeup. Tessa, wait! Are you seriously trying to make me pay for all of your shopping? Do you struggle to comprehend simple English? I think I made it crystal clear that that's exactly what you'll be doing. You should know when to give up. If you can afford to be a paying member at this supermarket, then you must have plenty of money going spare. Surely you can cover the few things I put in the cart. You probably wouldn't even feel it. Anyways, message me when you're done paying, okay? I'll be waiting. <sighs> I have no choice, do I? Fine, I'll go through the register. Thanks, sweetie. <laughs> Julia, help! Please come here. They're not letting me leave. What? Why? There's been some kind of misunderstanding. Over what? I don't understand what you mean. Well, you just paid for all of our shopping, didn't you? The cart that had my things in it. You said you forgot to buy something and pass me the cart. So I decided to go outside with it and wait while smoking a cigarette or something. But the moment I wheeled it out with all my shopping in it, the security guard yelled thief and ran over and grabbed hold of my arm. Some of the other employees rushed over and they all dragged me into the backyard. Please come quick. Clear up this misunderstanding at once. Oh my god, what are you doing, Tessa? That kind of behavior just isn't acceptable. Mm -mm -mm. You can't go walking out of the store with a cart full of shopping that hasn't been paid for. Huh? Not a single thing in the cart you tried wheeling out of the supermarket had been paid for. I didn't buy much, so I put all of my things in the reusable shopping bag I brought with me. What? Wait, what do you mean? Are you telling me you didn't pay for my things? Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. I told you countless times that I wouldn't be paying. I couldn't possibly have made it any clearer. If anything, isn't it a bit strange that you assumed it had been paid for? But you said you were going through the register. Then you passed over the cart full of my things afterwards. So isn't it only natural to assume it was all paid for by then? I might have said I'd go through the register. But I never once said that I'd pay for any of your things. I did consider going around and putting everything back, but I figured that would take too long. So... In the spirit of driving home the message that you should still pay for your own shopping yourself, I decided to pass you it back after paying for my own stuff instead. Was it not plain to see? Surely you understood. And how do you suppose I was supposed to understand that? Oh, you're despicable. How dare you use such a sneaky trick on me? No, once again, I'm pretty sure that's my line. You certainly have no right to accuse me of sneaky tricks after trying to con me into paying for your mountain of shopping. Ugh, anyway, forget about that. Just come and help me. They'll call the police if you don't come soon. Oh, if my husband finds out about this, he'll divorce me. Please, come to the backyard. Now. Sorry, no can do. I'm on the way home as we speak. I'm having a rest at the convenience store at the minute. What? 
You went home without me? Obviously. Not only did you try and extort money out of me, but you even looked into my purse while I wasn't looking. Taking into account the strong possibility that next time you wouldn't stop at just peeking and actually decide to steal my money, there's no way I could let you back into my car. Make your own way home. Please, just uh, hold on for one moment. I'd never do anything like that. Are you really going to abandon your friend like this? Don't you care about what happens to me? Bingo. I don't care at all. Huh? I only know you because we ran into each other at kindergarten every now and then. Maybe sometimes we'd say hi or give each other a nod. We're hardly best friends, are we, Tessa? What's more, after today's little incident, my trust for you has hit the rock bottom. We'll never be friends again, which is why whatever happens to you has nothing to do with me, and I couldn't care less. Wait! If you don't come and help me, you're set to lose out big time. Is that what you want? Lose out? How? All I did was buy my shopping and go home. I won't be covering the petrol money anymore. I mean it. I'll have you kicked out of the social circle of moms at kindergarten. I'll harass you at your home. Look, I really do hate to be rude, but... Are you a moron? What? No matter which way you look at it, rushing to help someone who just got caught red-handed in the act of shoplifting for a poxy $5 in petrol money just isn't worth it, is it? A person who just tried to squeeze $450 out of me with some cheap, slimy trick, no less. Plus, I'm almost certain you wouldn't be able to resist the urge to curse me out in the car on the way home, even if I did come back to help you. And to top it all off, no doubt rumors of me being your partner in crime would start spreading. Number two in the supermarket shoplifting duo. I don't like how that sounds. Finally, I'd get banned from the supermarket and the membership card I spent so much money on would have been a complete waste of money. Taking all of the above into consideration, if all I'm set to lose is a measly few liters in petrol money, the juice just isn't worth the squeeze. Gah! Besides, me and you are in different social circles at kindergarten. Not that I'd want to be friends with the type of person who peeks inside of people's purses while they're not looking in the first place. Even if you did somehow miraculously manage to get me ostracized, I wouldn't be bothered. And seriously, do you actually think I'm going to just take it lying down if you announce that you're going to start harassing me at my house? I'll install CCTV cameras, and even if you do so much as show up outside, I'll call the police. In conclusion, there's absolutely zero reason for me to come and get you out of this ridiculous mess that you got yourself into. Start behaving like an adult and call either your husband or the police. Or how about you just pay for your damn shopping and clear your name like a normal human being? Whether I call my husband or the police, I lose. This is nothing but bad for me. I didn't bring enough money with me to pay for all of this. I don't even have my credit card. Does that mean you filled the biggest trolley available with mountains of expensive things without even considering your financial situation? You were fully aware of mine, though, weren't you? You really did plan on screwing me over from the get-go. You're a disgraceful person. If you can't afford to pay, then call your husband or call the police. I don't want to do either! Please, I'm begging you, come back! Please, just cover the bill just this once! I'll pay you back later, I swear. I am so sorry I looked in your purse. I truly am. I'm sorry I tried to make you pay for the shopping too. I've never been this sorry about anything. I mean it. I'm super sorry. If you were that sorry, you wouldn't have done it in the first place. I won't be coming back because I have no reason to. It's really that simple. Anyways, I'm heading home now. It's been a real experience. See you at kindergarten. <laughs> that is, if I ever see you again. <laughs>
The police called her husband, and he rushed over to see her immediately. She tried dodging responsibility by kicking up a fuss at first, screaming, A woman called Julia tricked me. This was all her doing. But after the police confiscated her phone and looked at our chat history, her story crumbled, and her attempt to extort money out of me was exposed. I heard her husband completely lost it, and yelled at her so loud he could have burst a vein. That night, he came over to our place and apologized profusely for what his wife had done. Having seen the contents of our chats, he promised never to let her come anywhere near our house. When I told my close mom friends about what happened with Tessa over the next few days, they told me that apparently Tessa had been inviting the quieter, more timid moms on shopping trips for a long time now, and every time when it came to paying, she'd conveniently disappear, forcing her unlucky shopping companion to foot the bill, then using nonsensical logic to avoid spending a single cent of her own money. It turns out that this wasn't her first time extorting money out of someone, and she was quite the habitual offender. It's said that the total in damages incurred by her victims amounts to a whopping $7,500. And her husband, having found out about everything, is currently in the process of divorcing her. You are worthless, so don't knit your heart to your sister, huh? Sandra is sick. She won't survive without a heart transplant. Mom, are you crazy? What do you think will happen to me if I give her my heart? You'll die. You can't be serious. I'm dead serious. I want Sandra to live. I know you don't like me, but what you're asking is just impossible. Why? No doctor would perform a heart transplant from a living person. Then just go hit your head hard enough to be brain dead near a hospital. Excuse me? If you become brain dead, we can use your heart. Even if I tried, it's not something you can just do. The longer your sister needs to wait, the worse her condition will become. Plus, her medical bills are gonna become too much. I heard that the waiting list is long, and it could take a year or more. Why are you acting like a stranger? Your sweet sister is in trouble. She's not sweet. How dare you say that? After everything you guys have done to me, how could you think I'd want to help her? I want nothing to do with you guys, so just give up on getting my heart. No need to hold a grudge just for pouring hot water on you. That's not all. Those burns have prevented me from many things. I could never wear a swimsuit, and it has kept me from going out with men. I had to devote my life to work. What's so bad about that? You're lucky to be alive. I've thought many times that I would rather die than be unwanted. But as I grew up and started working, I discovered the joys of living. Don't get in my way anymore. Do you really think you can live happily after abandoning your sister? The 18 years I spent with you guys was hell. I can't die until I've lived enough to make up for it. You're an ice-cold person. I guess I didn't raise you right. I don't remember you raising me at all. I gave you food and a home. You mean the barn and the leftovers. Thanks for that. You're so annoying. If you transplant the heart of an ice-cold person like me, I think you won't be able to see Sandra as your adorable girl anymore. It's not like they're swapping out your brains, so it's not a problem. Anyway, it's impossible. I'm not giving up. Come to the hospital next week. Okay. If you don't show up, I'll dig out that heart of yours with force. Yeah, yeah. Sis, are you going to give me your heart? You're gonna ask me the same thing as mom? And you've never called me sis before. I want to apologize for what I did to you until now. 
Mom forced me to do all those mean things. It was never my intention to make you suffer. Huh? I've always felt so bad about it. I never wanted to hurt my own sister in any way. You said you look like an ugly cupcake. I'm laughing so hard that my stomach hurts and poured whipped cream on me. You're saying that was against your will? That's right. There's no way I could enjoy such an awful thing. It looks like you were enjoying it from the bottom of your heart. No, that's not true. Believe me. Even at school, you lied to everyone saying, My sister slaps me every day, and for some reason, everyone believed you. I don't remember why I lie like that. A boy I used to like called me the worst ugly bitch ever. Can you imagine how I felt at that time? Mom forced me to lie. So what? Apologizing won't make the past go away, nor erase my burnt scars. Damn it. Excuse me? I tried to act like a good girl, but what's the point if you won't donate your heart to me? I knew it. I knew you'd never reflect on your actions. You know who deserves to live more. That's not for you to decide. You want me to do an Instagram survey? You don't sound like you're sick. My condition is good today. But you never know what may happen. So we're trying to get a transplant ASAP. I already told mom, but you can't expect a transplant from a living person. I know. That's why I need you half dead. You and mom are saying the same thing. Anyway, don't think you can get away easily after pissing me off. I've got tons of guys who love me for my good looks and my words. They'll do anything to get my love. What are you planning to do? My life is on the line. I'll do whatever it takes. You could go to jail before you get a transplant. Shut up! I've also got a couple of cops who are drooling over me. So you're going out with several men at once? I was. But when I told them about the transplant, they all left. No one was wealthy enough to support me. So you're getting impatient, having no one to support you financially. I'm busy looking for rich men who will support me, so I'll see you later. I'm sorry to hear about your illness, but you shouldn't do anything that could ruin you in other ways. You have no idea how it feels like to be close to death. You're worthless if you're not going to give me your heart. I can't believe you would actually do something like this. What are you talking about? Five strangers suddenly attacked me. Hitting me on the head. It was you and Sandra's doing, wasn't it? Why are you still alive? You're tougher than I thought. We know that you guys hired them. The police are already on the case. Sandra's lying in a hospital bed, and I'm constantly taking care of her. How can we possibly do anything like that? That's why you hired people to do your dirty work. Then prove it. I know nothing about it. You asked me earlier why I'm still alive. I said that because I believe you were willing to sacrifice your life for Sandra. The police will find out the truth sooner or later, so I'll leave it to them. Are you trying to turn your sick sister into a criminal? Sandra won't survive if she goes to jail in this condition. If that's the case, you guys should have focused on the medical treatment instead of doing evil deeds. How many times do I have to tell you? Transplantation is the only way to save her life. I'm sorry, but I don't care. Are you even human? I'd like to return those words to you. We're family. I've never felt that way about you nor Sandra. I hate you guys, and you'll never be my family. That's terrible. I don't care what you think. You can call me a villain for not helping my sister, 
but it won't change my decision. Fine. I've decided to raise money through crowdfunding. Okay. With her pretty looks, I'm sure we can raise a fortune in no time. We should have done this a long time ago. I wonder if it'll go that easily. You should donate all your savings too. No way. Why can't you at least support us financially if not donating your heart? I already told you how much I hate you guys and that I don't care a bit. You're going to hell. If I'm going to hell, you guards are going to a deeper hell. Don't get smart with me. I really don't care what happens to her. I can't even wish you guys good luck. Don't ever contact me again. I'll spread the word on the internet that you're a heartless sister. Do whatever you want. Damn it. I thought you'd cry and beg for a life like you used to. You've grown so cocky. I don't live in that little barn anymore. Prepare yourself for what's to come. Once Sandra's surgery goes well, I'll show you what real suffering is. I'm looking forward to it. Pretty Sandra has returned all well and good. Good for you. After I was added on the waiting list, things just went by so smoothly. I guess luck was on my side. What about the cost? I heard it cost about $1.4 million. Why would I tell you, the heartless sister, about the money? Are you still in the hospital? Yes, I am. I'm going to be discharged tomorrow. I see. Well, while you're there, I suggest you enjoy the freedom while you still can. What do you mean by that? Didn't you know that mom was arrested? Why? After the surgery, just as she left the hospital and came home, they caught her. Oh no, maybe... You seem to have an idea why she'd be caught. We had no choice. Even if it was for your life, it's not right to threaten people to take their money. How do you know about this? Well, it's become big news on the internet. A devious mother and daughter who committed fraud for a transplant. No kidding! Your classmates and ex-boyfriends tracked me down. They told me they'd been ripped off by you and mom. I told them it'd be difficult for them to get a refund because the money will be all spent on the transplant. So, they filed a damage report and explained everything to the police. You should have said something to calm them down. Why not tell them the truth? Even a five-year-old knows that we shouldn't lie. Plus, we need to report to the police if there are criminals in the area. I just had my life saved and I was ready to restart my life. What do I do now? I can't go home in this situation. You can't stay in the hospital forever since the medical fee is going to get too expensive. Damn! How in the world did you collect such a large sum of money? My hobby is to find people's weaknesses. I have more than five weakness notebooks filled with weaknesses of everybody I've known. I contacted every single one of them and got them to donate. The problem is that they don't think it's a donation. I told them about the transplant, but no one would help me. So, I made up an investment story. They'll give you a lot of money once they think it'll be profitable. So, they thought money was more important than your life. I deserve to be loved just for being alive. Why do I have to go through all this suffering? Do you think the people whose money you took are not suffering? All their hard-earned money was taken away by a bitch like you. I feel more sorry for them than you. My life was on the line. Some people say that there is no difference in the value of life. But I assure you, you didn't deserve to live. That's a terrible thing to say. 
but it would have been too easy for you to die like that. At the same time, I thought this might be a chance given to me by God so that I can get my revenge. I don't get what you're saying. You think you guys raised over $1.4 million by just threatening people? That's what mom said. It seems like mom was working under your orders. I couldn't get out of bed, so I had no choice. The money you guys raised through crowdfunding was only 100k at most. What? That's nowhere near enough. I paid for the rest. Nonsense! I own more than 10 companies. I never heard of this. If I told you, you'd come asking me for money. That's why I didn't tell you. And then, mom didn't need to do anything to get caught. Yeah, I guess so. So you intentionally kept it from us until the last minute? That's right. Mom texted me every day, saying how much more she needed. I was aware of your financial situation. So, you just couldn't abandon me after all and pay the money. You care about me. Don't get me wrong. I did it so that I could send you guys to hell for the rest of your lives. What? I didn't donate anything. I just lent it to you. And with interest up to the limit. I can't believe you. Your kind sister will wait for you until you get out of jail. You'll be paying me back the money for the rest of your life. No way. I didn't go through the surgery to live in hell. But you have to pay back what you borrowed. If you're earning that much money, don't make a big fuss about it. After you pay the money for the treatment, I hear you'll have no savings. You won't have mom by your side to collect any more money. You have no one to even take care of you after discharge. So, are you going to be okay? Oh no! If you agree to my conditions, I'll let you recover a bit under my care before going to jail. If you don't agree, I'll talk to the police and have them catch you ASAP. I need your care, but I don't know about the money mom borrowed from you. I'm not the one who borrowed it. The IOU is in both of your names and I have your signature. Didn't mom make you sign some papers? I thought those were all hospital related papers. You signed those papers to agree on several conditions. Every month, you have to repay me $3,000, plus work as my housekeeper. You also have to speak to me in a polite manner. You're kidding, right? Mom accepted those terms. She wanted to save you so badly. I'll never do your biddings. There are so many things I want to do once I recover. I'm going to show you what happens when you make me angry. I found your weakness notebooks. I handed them all over to the police, so you can't use that against anyone. It's over. That was my only chance to earn money. Poor kid, who had no talent but to blackmail people. I'm going to take good care of you from now on. Don't worry. I'm scared. What do you plan to do with me? First, you must pay for your sins. You didn't have good parents. I'm going to discipline you from zero. No. I'm looking for a living with you. After spending five years in prison, my mother and sister came to my house. I converted the barn for them to live in, since I couldn't trust them to have them in my house while I was asleep. When I was small, they made me stay at the barn without electricity, so I consider myself very kind to at least let them live in a place with lighting. They do all the house chores under my watch. While I'm at work, I have a professional housekeeper to keep an eye on them to make sure they don't skip jobs 
and also prevent them from stealing anything. My sister has acquired so much house chore skills, but she will not get married anytime soon. Unfortunately, she may never get married. She has no money to maintain her beauty and also has no time to go on dates. They work part time and do the chores anytime they have free time. Until they repay me all the money by themselves, they shall never be free from me. Do you think I'm a demon to treat them like this? Sometimes I think I may be cruel, but they're the ones who turn me into a demon. So I'll just let go of that thought. After repaying me, they don't have much money left, so they are begging me to give them my leftovers. It reminds me of how they made me eat their leftovers and beat me up later if I dropped even one breadcrumb. They should consider themselves lucky that I wasn't a violent person.